folks, you made it. It's time to install, download and install Champ. And there's a couple of steps we need to do. The very first step you'll actually want to do outside of this video. Once we get Champ installed in a few minutes, we're going to need to edit a couple of files that come along with Champ. And if you don't have a text editor that's a little bit fancier than plain old Notepad, it's kind of a pain to edit those files. So I recommend either getting Notepad++, which you can see the icon for it right here, or getting Sublime Text, which I have Sublime Text number three. Now Sublime Text does have a free trial for about 30 days, and then eventually you can just pay for it, which I've done. I, prefer, I like that software a lot. So either of those two will be fine. If you use Visual Studio, or if you use Atom or Brackets, there's a whole bunch of other ones, just some software like that, but not an IDE, not something like Eclipse or any of those things. You need a plain souped up text editor, right? Notepad++, Sublime Text, something like that. Once you've installed that and you have it ready to go and it's working, then you can move on to the next step. In order to install Champ, you just simply have to go to a browser, go to the internet, and just search for download Champ. And you want to go right here to this link here that says download, go to downloads. Now obviously this is the Windows tutorial, so we want the Windows set up here. And we want the one with the latest version of PHP software, which is this one right here. When you're watching this video, it may be that these numbers have changed in the future but you just look at them and get the highest version that you can find. And then download right here, just click that button. Notice it did bring you to another screen here. Just ignore that screen, don't worry about it, and just wait for this to download right down here in the bottom left. Once it's done downloading, all you gotta do is just click on it right there. Next up, you're gonna get this message here warning you not to install Champ in a certain place. Don't worry about that, just leave it the way it is. And when you click OK, it's going to just install Champ directly on your C drive. So that'll be fine. Just click OK. And then just Next. Leave everything checked. Next. And as you can see here, it puts it in the C colon Champ. So click Next. Click Next. When you click Next, this little Bitnami page opens up to learn more about the people who created Champ and everything. You just close that down. That's fine. And then click Next and then let it run. Once it's done installing, leave that check mark checked. Make sure it's checked because you want to launch the control panel right now. And you click finish. Choose your language of choice. And here it is in all its glory, the Champ control panel. First of all, there are two services that we care about. And that is Apache, which is our web service. Even in the 1550 class, just go ahead and make sure Apache is running. And then MySQL, which is both the 1550 and 2440, both classes, you'll want to click Apache and MySQL for 1550 and 2440, click them both. So start, starting up Apache, it turns green, it's live and working, and then same thing with MySQL, click the start button and it'll turn green. So now both of those services are running. You now have live on your laptop right now, a web server and also a database server. Now that Apache and MySQL are both running, we need to make a few changes to some of the database settings. So the first thing we're gonna do is click on this button right here that says config. And then right here where it says editor, we're gonna change that from Notepad to Notepad++ or to whatever text editor you downloaded. So click the folder here, and then I'm going to the C drive, and for Notepad++, it's right here in program files scroll down to notepad plus plus and right there so now that's set also i'm going to click auto start of modules apache and mysql this means that every time i open up champ those services will just start up and i don't have to click the start button manually so that's it we're going to save that next up we're going to set a database password right now there's no database password so if you click right here on the admin button It'll actually log you right in to PHPMyAdmin, which is a database interface. 
So right now I can get into all the databases that we have, which are not many, it's just the default ones here that come with the system, but I can get into each of those right now and I don't have a password. So we're gonna change the password. And the first thing we do to, to set this up is go to user accounts right here, click that, and then look at this list of people here. You'll see one, two, three roots. You want the very last one here at the very bottom, root localhost, come over here to edit privileges, click that. Then at the very top here, click change password. And right here, do not click generate. It'll generate some crazy, long, really crazy password. This is just on your local machine. Unless somebody has access to your local machine, they can't even get into this database, even if they know the password. But even if they did know the password and they're on your machine, this is not, this is just test for the class and it's not anything that we need to worry about. So we're going to use as a password 1550, 1550, which is the number of the database course, right? CSIS 1550. Even those of you who are in the 2440 class, I want you to use 1550. I want the passwords for everybody to be 1550, right? It's a weak password, but that's okay. Put it there, retype it. Do not click generate. You want to come over here to the right and click go. Once you've done that, then if you refresh the page, you'll actually get an error. That's actually what we want. So I refresh it and now I have an error because I am trying to log in without a password and the system is requiring a password. So let's go ahead and close this out and we're gonna come back over here and we're going to edit the configuration file to change it to have the password inside of it. The way to change the config file so that it will use a password to log us in, you simply go right here along the line of Apache here to config, and then move down to phpMyAdmin config.inc.php. You click on that, it will open it in Notepad++ or Sublime or whatever you put as your default text editor. Well, we're looking right here on line 21 where it says CFG servers I password right there you're going to put 1550 whatever the password is we just put in the system a minute ago so save it close it and now you want to stop and restart each of these services here whenever you make a change like that it's best practice to restart the services now if they're stopped i'm going to click start for apache first and then my sql now i'm going to click on admin next to my sql here and it should log me right back in there without a problem so here we are, now we have access to the database. Now in the PHP class, this is the interface you will be using. In the database class, 1550, you're gonna be using the command line. So that's it for this video. For the PHP students, the next video that you're gonna watch will help you set up your web portion of all this and get your PHP file set up so that you can write PHP code on your local machine. For the 1550 class, the next video you watch will show you two things. Thing number one, it's going to show you how to install all of the databases that you need for the semester, for the class. And then the second thing it's going to show you is how to make a quick little batch file that instantly logs you in to the command line so that it's easy to get to the files and everything in class and when you're doing all of your homework. So that's it, folks. I'll see you on the next one.